This is just a quick video that was intended to be a repair video and it was a repair of this. Uh, if you've never seen one of these it's a Thakoscope 2000 and uh, unfortunately I couldn't make the repair video because um, when I started having a quick look at this to see uh, how I would go about doing the video it started working. I'll show you what I found inside in a few minutes but um, Unfortunately it now works so I can't really do the repair video um, but I thought I'd show the device anyway. It's kind of one of those very niche devices that um, was fairly short-lived but um, whether it was useful or not kind of depends on how you look at it but I uh, actually purchased this for uh, other reasons which again I'll, I'll explain in a few minutes. Um, what it is, it's uh, an RS232 terminal in effect. It's a test device for testing RS-232 equipment. So uh, by way of example if you've been watching my channel you may have seen the ADM-3 terminal um, that I did the reproduction main board for. So let's move the camera and, and so you may recognize the terminal. It's a dumb terminal and it's intended to control um, vintage equipment, um, comp old computers, that sort of thing and it's kind of the main user interface, the display and the keyboard and it's uh, connected through RS-232 and this in effect is exactly the same functionality as this this goes slightly further because you can send predefined uh, test sequences it can do a bitrate analysis, that sort of thing um, as I said it's not really why I bought it but I thought I'd demonstrate this anyway and so the sorts of things you can do with it, I've got it hooked up to the ADM3 at the moment and if I turn this on now you probably can't see the display on this, it's a fairly old and uh, poor display but what I can do is set all the uh, RS-232 parameters I can uh, turn on the monitor and then I can actually send, uh, tell it to start sending continuous test data so if we now look at the ADM3 you'll see that we are getting continuous test data until I stop the uh, Thakoscope and of course you've got um, kind of patch panels and all this sort of thing so you can uh, decide what pins are connected and um, it's, uh, it's fairly flexible it's, you can do more with this than you can with most um, emulators on PCs um, as ever apologies if you're seeing flicker on the uh, monitor that's not visible in real life that's just uh, an artifact of the lights I have in here and the camera shutter speed um, and of course this will also allow capturing of data so if I send data from um, the uh, terminal again you probably can't see it but that is appearing on the display of the Thakoscope so it's effectively it's a, a, a dumb terminal um, with uh, some enhancements as I say it can do bit um, uh, error analysis and all this sort of thing and uh, you can also put it into different modes so it will send using different um, uh, formats and, and packet structures so it is quite useful uh, that's what it's for that's not really why I bought it um, so what we'll do now is uh, I'll move the camera I'll take the cover off the Fakoscope I'll show you what I found that was wrong with it uh, and then I'll explain why I purchased this incidentally I got this off eBay uh, for about £10 a week or so ago so um, it's uh, very cheap and you can pick these up for almost nothing um, back in the 80s when they were first um, sold they were very expensive I think about £1,000 or something like that so equivalent of about £3,500 in today's money so uh, they were expensive um, and um, I've never really seen them I had one that I rarely used and I've got no idea what happened to it and uh, this is the only other one I've ever seen so uh, they were fairly rare but uh, anyway we'll have a look inside and I'll explain why I bought this I've got the screws out of the outer cover so we'll just lift that off and um, what we have inside is a fully functional microcomputer system which we'll have a look at in a minute now I said I'd um, say what the fault was and uh, it would power up but it wouldn't send any data and what it turned out to be was uh, this is meant to be uh, battery powered and uh, the internal battery is 
uh, sellotaped or glued to the inside of the outer cover. And for some bizarre reason, somebody had uh, cut the wires going to this. Let's get this out of the way. And uh, this, I don't know why they cut the wires, because um, basically the battery's plugged on, they could have just unplugged it. Um, but they'd cut the wires, made a half-hearted attempt at um, putting tape onto the end of the wires they'd cut, um, but the tape had fallen off and the wires were just dangling around inside and the positive uh, was touching uh, one of the pins on one of the ICs. Luckily it doesn't seem to have damaged it, but uh, as I say, fairly strange because all they had to do was just unplug uh, this and uh, it would have been fine. So, uh, kind of a strange thing to do, but um, perhaps they were trying to test the batteries or something, but um, either way, um, I might well replace the batteries. This does have um, other uses beyond what I intended to use it for when I bought it. Um, we'll have a quick look around first. So we've got the uh, main uh, unit. It's got two um, LCD displays and these are the serial types so uh, quite easy to drive. Uh, and then we've got a microprocessor. So we've got a, a 6303. Uh, we've got a 7201 and we've got the serial controller as well. So it's got all the main features we require for uh, a micro uh, controller system. Um, keyboard controller, it's got um, RAM, uh, ROM and some battery backed RAM as well. Uh, this battery is dead so I get a warning every time I turn it on saying it's lost the memory but again standard type battery so I can replace that if I want. Um, so as you can see, it's got uh, all the things that uh, make it uh, quite a useful uh, platform. And that's why I bought this. I actually uh, quite often find myself um, cobbling together a breadboard microcontroller system so I can test various pieces of vintage test equipment, usually ones that need specific interface types. And this has quite a number of, or a number, has a few interfaces that are quite useful. So it's got the standard printer ports, uh, a fairly uh, nice in-out expansion port and two serial ports. And the two serial ports are fully fledged serial ports, so they are fully configurable within the uh, control of the system. As I say, we've got two standard uh, LCD displays and you hopefully can see where I'm going with this. The, I bought this to use as a development platform for testing vintage uh, equipment. Now while you can get uh, much more modern um, ARM or PIC based uh, development boards, um, this tends to be a lot easier to deal with when we're looking at vintage equipment. And so what I've got here is effectively um, a proper um, hexadecimal keyboard, um, some user defined keys, uh, serial in-out port, printer port, expansion port and some fairly nice uh, large-scale integration devices to allow easy in-out. All I have to do is figure out how the circuit is arranged. That will be very straightforward because if you look in here all we really have are devices that are all going to be on the data and address bus with a little bit of decoding. Uh, we've got some relays for the uh, various in-out control functions, um, but that's pretty much it. Once I've got that and I've got it mapped out, then it'd be very easy to write my own uh, code for this and have a unit that can be used for almost any sort of testing. And uh, if I'm, for example, working on an ADM3 terminal, I'll be able to send very specific test uh, patterns or receive the data from the terminal without having to resort to uh, powering up the PC and uh, starting an emulator and all the aggravation that uh, can go along with that. It's sometimes nice just to have a small unit like this that uh, you can do the testing for. Um, but also of course I can create my own um, unique test systems and again that's something I quite often need to do when testing vintage equipment is um, creates a uh, a fairly odd test to test a, a certain part of the functionality of a unit and having something like this where I have full control over the ports and what's been sent in and out without having the restrictions of uh, emulators and um, uh, other pieces of predefined equipment it, this makes this uh, an ideal piece of equipment for that 
and it's uh, also a lot of fun to do this sort of thing. You could turn this into pretty much any piece of test equipment that you want and so for £10 um, it's well worth uh, the outlay. I may replace the displays with better contrast types. Uh, these are quite hard to uh, read but um, other than that I think it will make a, an excellent platform for some experimentation so you will most likely be seeing this in uh, various forms in the upcoming videos so um, any comments if you've had one of these and used it for anything then uh, please let me know